What can you do with uranium? Well, because of its 4.47 billion year half-life, you can actually use it to date the age of Earth. You can also use it to make uranium glass, which actually glows under UV light. The interesting story about this is that a bunch of people just wanted radon, because radon is what actually glows in the dark. You know, those old wrist watches that actually have well, glow in the dark hands. That's from radon, and creating radon, you actually get a byproduct of uranium. So they just use this byproduct to create uranium glass. Most importantly, you can use it in power plants. One kilogram of enriched uranium-235 can put out 80 terajoules of energy. Now that number is pretty big, but a lot of people have no idea exactly how big it is. Now the typical American driving in the year 2000 uses up, I forgot what the amount of energy was, but one kilogram of uranium-235 inside a car, and assuming that you have complete fission, will let you drive this car from the year 2000 on an average day, you know, just drive it like normal for a thousand years. That is how many 80 terajoules is. And that is how much one kilogram of uranium-235 is. That's pretty amazing. A typical uranium rod in a power plant is actually only 3% enriched. That is, there's only 3% uranium-235 in that rod. But if you were to make a weapon, you need something like 90% uranium-235, which is a lot more power. But we'll talk about that later. The first nuclear power plant was operational on December 1951. But what did it power? Laughably, it only powered four 150-watt light bulbs. But we've done a lot better since then, that's for sure. So what exactly happens in a nuclear reaction? Well, I'm gonna overly simplify things, but what you do is you send a neutron and it hits your element, in this case uranium, and what happens is uranium-235, it splits in half, and that splitting actually creates a lot of energy. Now, when it splits, it also sends out three neutrons, or I think it's three, I believe it's three, that's, that's from memory. It splits, sends out three neutrons. Now, these three neutrons also hit, well, other atoms and it splits them and then they split and three more three more come out and they split and they split now what you what happens is if you don't control this splitting well you have yourself a nuclear meltdown so to control it what you have to do is you have to send these rods of a different element um shoot i forgot what element it was but what you do is you send them in and what happens is the neutron hits these rods instead of the uranium rods which kind of slows down the the nuclear reaction with all this technology, can natural fission actually happen? Well, yes, that was the case in Africa 1.7 billion years ago, where there was more percentage of uranium-235, which is fissionable, which caused a fission reaction. Now, it wasn't really an explosion, it was more like the ground heated up, but it didn't really melt things. So, you know, it's not really that dramatic, but it did happen back in the day. It's very, very, very unlikely for it to happen now because the percentage of uranium-235 out there in the world is actually a lot less than it was back then. When your uranium rod reaches about 0.3% uranium-235, it is now considered depleted uranium. So it's mostly made out of uranium-238. What do you use depleted uranium for, though? Bullets. That's right. Depleted uranium can be used for bullets because it's extremely dense, and yes, it sinks in mercury. It can also be used for, well, plates. Armor plating for your tanks and vans and things like that. It can also be used in hospitals to prevent x-rays from passing through the patient, passing through the walls, and hitting Jim on the other side waiting for the receptionist. But the thing is, depleted uranium is actually poisonous, just like lead. I mean, you wouldn't eat lead, you shouldn't eat depleted uranium. But if you shoot depleted uranium bullets at a depleted uranium wall, let's say, what happens is you create dust, just depleted uranium dust. And if you inhale this dust, it could form an acid in your lungs, which would kill you. So that's why it's kind of a jerk move to use depleted uranium against, well, enemies out in the battlefield. Finally, uranium is used in bombs. In fact, 7 to 13 kilograms of enriched, 90% enriched uranium is used in these nuclear bombs. 
which is why they're extremely devastating because you know you only use three percent in the power plant and 90 percent on this one you only use one kilogram in a power plant to create a lot of energy and you use seven to 13 kilograms in this bomb so yes that's why they explode <laughs> a lot now what's the difference between a nuclear bomb and a thermonuclear bomb well a nuclear bomb typically just involves fission, fission reaction, usually uranium-235. But not always the case, sometimes plutonium is also used. But what about thermonuclear? What is it? Well, inside the bomb casing, there is, well, uranium-235 fission. And what happens is this fission reaction, whenever it, whenever it explodes, what it does is it compresses hydrogen, another cylinder of hydrogen right beside it. And compressing this hydrogen actually causes fusion reaction. And well, that causes even more explosion. So you really get two for one. That's why most bombs out there are thermonuclear bombs because it's not really that much more expensive to get yourself hydrogen. With all this talk about uranium, how exactly does it affect humans, you know, eating it, breathing it, and just having it sit right beside you. A typical human that eats, which I'm assuming is you, eats about one to two micrograms of uranium per day. Now you're telling me, whoa, 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 I don't actually eat uranium. Well, you do, because if you eat plants, you eat uranium. One to two micrograms isn't really much, but throughout your lifetime, it equates to about 20 mosquitoes which again, isn't really that much. So you shouldn't really be worried about, you know, uranium poisoning in your food source. So if you have uranium about the size of this charger, should you be worried about it? I mean, having it right here in front of your face. Well, if I could, I would get it out of my way. But if you can't, you shouldn't really be that worried because of its long half-life. Uranium-238 has a 4 billion year half-life, so really the chances of it decaying right in front of you is, actually, it's a lot, but not a lot of the atoms will actually decay. Secondly, whenever uranium decays, its alpha particle doesn't actually penetrate your skin. Its alpha particles are actually pretty weak in that sense. But the decay series, so it goes from uranium to a bunch of other elements all the way down the periodic table, those actually emit gamma or beta particles, which is, well, terrible for you. So yes, if you had it right in front of you, you shouldn't be worried, but if you could get it out of your way, I would. And this is only because it's uranium-238, or mostly uranium-238. If this was pure uranium-235, well, uh, that'll be a different situation. All right, well, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And yeah, that's it. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, I'm starting. <laughs>